Sunday school or uh, children's revival. You know, it's easy sometimes to think of services like today as uh, maybe non-consequential or uh, maybe not as important. That couldn't be farther from the truth. The Bible says, train a child up in the way he should go. When he's old, he won't depart from it. I can remember at about five years of age right here when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I remember my mother and Brother Lloyd Gunner were praying with me. I was five years old. Five or six maybe. That is a forever, that date, that time, that experience is indelibly imprinted upon my spirit and my mind. Very little I remember about my childhood at that time, but that's one of the most remarkable experiences. We don't know what's going to happen today, but we know these young people, this service is dedicated for our children to have experiences just like that. So that when they grow old, and I'm not old yet, I'm just 49, but when they grow old, they won't depart from it. That means that they won't be able to get away from it. Brother Brandon sang a song last week, He Don't Give Up Easy. Talks about how many times you heard the story sitting on your mother's knee. And they're going to hear about all these times of these Bible stories from their Sunday school teachers, from their parents. But they need an experience with their God. And, ta- and uh, our uh, services like today are just tailor-made for those. And I'm so grateful that Brother Wagner's here. And uh, we're just going to go, and we're going to take today's service at the speed of our children. Is that okay? Is that okay? Some of you maybe not have children this age, but uh, maybe your grandchildren are this age, or maybe you just don't like children this age. (laughs) That's okay. Give them to Jesus. He said, suffer the little children and let them come to me. He stopped all kinds of stuff for children. And we need to stop our busy schedule sometimes so our children can have experiences in God so they don't suffer some of the same mistakes and problems you and I did. Amen? Amen. So I'm so excited about today's, uh, today's service. At the end of the service, I'm sure we're going to gather around the altar. And I pray that not just some of these children. In the eyes of God, we're all his children. And maybe somewhere along here, you can humble yourself, the scripture says, and become as a little child and feel the presence of God and have an experience in God today. Amen. I'm going to get out of the way because I know you didn't come and hear me say anything. But would you just stand with me together? I know usually we go before the Lord in prayer, but young'uns don't get that stuff. So could we all just give God a hand clap of praise? You guys know how to do that? Let's just invite Jesus into this service today and pray that God's will would be done. Amen.
joy of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for peace and joy. We bow down and worship Him now. Cause how great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. expecting the Holy Ghost to fall today. Amen. I know, brother and sister, closing. I know the rest of your teachers have been praying, fasting, asking God to end up doing that. On that line, will all of our teachers please stand? Those who work with the youth, everyone who works with children in any capacity. Nursery, will you all stand up? We don't give these people near enough recognition for the change they're making in lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. Brother Wagner, you should be on your feet, brother. <laughs> We're so excited to have Brother Wagner with us. Been looking forward to it. But I can tell you we weren't quite as excited as a video I saw a pastor over the weekend. I won't say nothing more about that. Not on Facebook, but my children showed me. It was so, that was awesome. I thank you for doing that, letting yourself be put out there. What a wonderful time. I'm expecting there to be more exciting things happen here, though, today. God is going to do a wonderful thing. How many of you adults are familiar with the concept of having an emotional tank that has to be full of something? Yeah. That whenever you're full of love, you enjoy life, and you can feel more potential in your life. So what fills that emotional tank? It's that unconditional love. Love is the foundation for a secure child who grows up into a giving, loving adult. As we have it, Focusing on children today, I just thought I'd mention a couple of things. All of us, but especially children, have a universal need for security and for safety. How many of you can relate to that? 
Whenever things are unsettled, when you're, whenever you're going through change, you become very unsettled. What feels that most, parents? Let me just tell you, from a child's perspective, is whenever you love your spouse unconditionally. Whenever children see you loving on your spouse, letting them know how much you love them, it gives them that sense of security. I was reading a book recently about a husband, and he was talking about coming across this concept. Didn't know his children was around. He had about eight, ten-year-old daughters. And he was hugging on his wife, giving her a kiss. They was, I think they was dancing in a living room. And the children walked in unexpectedly and caught them. And he said whenever he saw them, both of the girls were just standing there with tears running down their eyes. And it frightened him. And then he recognized they were just feeling the love he was sharing with his spouse. They was experiencing as a part of that family the love that you have. Where does love come from? It comes from God. And so as, chi- as parents, you can express that by showing your love to your children, obviously unconditionally. But to your spouse is where they get that sense of security. But exactly what pastor was preaching before, ministering before, in the sanctuary, we have that opportunity to express that love to God in a way. I was watching our children. They're not quite as comfortable worshiping on the front row. But I see them sitting by you. And they're worshiping. Why? Because they see you worshiping. They're following in your footsteps, doing what you're doing. So as we begin worshiping and experiencing Pentecost today, they're going to start feeling the comfort of that, start feeling the love of God. We're going to have a wonderful time in Jesus' name today. As the ushers come, we have a couple of prayer requests. Brother Veal, if you wouldn't mind just coming after them, Pastor said we want to anoint you with oil. He's recovering from a surgery, has some results, some recovery that's happening. Ask God's healing on his body. As he's coming for prayer, if our elder will come and pray with us. Brother Lashley, if you wouldn't mind helping. Brother Paul Huff is recovering. Um, Sister Mother Lashley is sick this morning. My dad can't get out, can't hardly move at all. I'm asking for a prayer for his back. But we're going to pray for Brother Veal. Will you children help us pray? God, God hears faith. And if anybody has faith, it's children. As I always mention to Brother Clausing, it is Sunday school teacher. Let's pray and ask God's healing upon Brother Veal, upon the others of these. Jesus, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the promise your word gives us of healing. We join with faith today, asking you to speak healing into Brother Veal's body. Give him a quick recovery. Let your anointing minister to him. Scripture says you sent your word and you healed them. And I ask you to speak healing into his body today. Take away the pain. Take away the problems. God, we ask you to speak healing into the other ones who have requested prayer today. Brother Paul Huff, I ask you to speak healing into Mother Lashley. I ask you to speak healing to Sister Ann Heinrich's knee. I ask you to speak healing into my father's back. I ask you in the faith believing that you will end up doing it. We promise to testify of your goodness, of your healing power. We'll let others know of what you have done. Thank you for your anointing upon this same sanctuary upon these children. Ask your anointing upon Brother Wagner as he ministers. Ask your anointing upon the remainder of this service as we worship you and as we give you praise. Ask your anointing upon everything that we do and say here today. I ask you to speak faith into our children's lives. I ask you to help their faith to grow and as they step into an altar of prayer, let anointing minister, anoint our teachers to move with faith. Give them a boldness to speak out to see your will and your work done. God, I ask your anointing upon this tithe and offering as we give it back to you with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise. 
together and give him praise. God, we worship you. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You children ready? Max, are you ready? Max, you ready, buddy? Can I get them ready first? Okay. You don't have to do this, guys, if you don't want to. But we have just effectively ended our adults' side of this service. So you don't have to be so stuffy. Guys, I'm giving you permission, especially you men on my staff that have to wear suit and ties on Sundays. Go ahead and lose that top button because you can't do raise him, raise him, lift your hands and praise him. <laughs> you need to relax a little bit, okay? Is that all right? We're going to have a good time with the children today, all right? I am so excited. Brother Wagner's here. He's no stranger to this uh, pulpit, this auditorium. We love him to death. Would you give this wonderful man of God 
a, a hand clap. Let's give him a Peoria welcome, would you? I got a couple other places, and then you're, you're, you're right in that third position because you just haven't had me long enough, okay? But to, we are so thankful to be back in Peoria again. Amen. And what a wonderful group of people. I just love all of you because every time that I'm here, we've had some great services, and it's not because of me. Amen. It's because of you, because of your expectation. And I believe that God wants to do something here today. Y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, it is good to be here, and I want to I want to say this before we go any further. Thank you to uh, to brother and sister Clossing, Amen, for uh, speaking and uh, just uh, talking back and forth to me to let them know uh, what they expect from me and what I expect from them and all that. And you've done a wonderful job. We had a great time with the teachers yesterday. You got some wonderful teachers here, you really do. Amen. Can I hear just the children clap your hands for your teachers? Come on. Oh, that's awesome. Amen. But I want to say thank you to, uh, to the ministry staff here, to uh, Bishop, who is not here. What, what happened? Did we eat the wrong thing last night or what? But uh, sad that he is not able to be here today. But uh, so thankful for Brother Jeff Lashley. Amen. Your, your pastor. Amen. Let's clap our hands for him. Amen. Amen. And Brother John Lashley, I haven't got to greet you yet since I've been here, but it's so good to see you again. Clap your hands for him. <laughs> Amen. Now, when I was here the first time, Bishop was in California. When I was here last time, uh, last year, Brother Lashley was in Hawaii. So, Brother Jonathan, you, you should be in Hawaii right now or some, someplace, the Caribbeans or something. <laughs> Amen. But kids, this service is all about you. Amen. And, and, and I'm going to give you permission to do this, okay? Your pastor will never allow you to do this, but I'm going to give you permission to turn around in your seats and look at the people behind you. Yeah, we call them adults, okay? If you don't know which ones they are, they're the ones with wrinkled skin, gray hair, and baggy clothes, okay? Now, turn around, kids. All right, since you know who they are, I'm going to play a game with the adults first, okay? All right? Because it's a kid's service, all right? Adults, you probably woke up this morning knowing that you were going to come to church, but you also knew that it was going to be a kid's service. So you probably came into the church this morning with a mentality, boop, boop, that it's just a kid's service, and I'm just going to sit back and take it easy. All the kids go, huh, uh. No. So kids, I mean adults, here's what we're going to do. I want you to pick a number between uh, today, let's say, 4 and 11. Pick a number between 4 and 11. Oh, also, all you distinguished uh, teenagers, okay? All right. Got that? That is your number for the rest of this service. I mean, that is your age for the rest of this service. I'll get it right. All right. Whatever number you picked, that is your age. So you could have picked 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right. We're all a kids' class here today. Awesome. Cool. Amen. You know what? As I was driving over here, I had to stop at a stop sign. There's several stop signs in Peoria. But when I stopped, I couldn't go because there was something crossing the road from this side. And it just took its time. You know what it was? It was a cow. Yeah. Remember some of my cow things that I told last year, you know? I saw one cow and it was shaking all over like that. You know what you call it? Beef jerky. Okay, but anyway... 
But anyway, there was this cow crossing the road. And he just took, she just took her time and finally got over to the other side. And I was getting ready to push the gas pedal. And I had to stop. Because as soon as she got over there, something else was walking back this way. You know what was walking back this way? Not a cow, but a duck. You ever seen a duck walk? It just waddles like this. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know what you get when you cross a cow and a duck? Milk and quackers. <laughs> you even got that, didn't you? That was funny, huh? And you know what? I can't wait till the service is over because I want God to do, have his way first. But I want to get something to eat after I get done. But you know what? Cows get hungry too. You know where their favorite place to eat is? Huh? The cafeteria. Oh, come on. Clap your hands, somebody, to Jesus. <laughs> oh, we're having fun. We're having fun. Any, anybody know what this is? That's right, it's a Rubik's Cube. Yeah, and has anybody ever solved those? Huh? You have? Oh, cool. I never have. It's too hard for me. You twist and twist and twist, and I just still can't do it. But you know what? When we come into this world, our lives are messed up, just like this Rubik's Cube is. All right? And the only way to get it solved is to find Jesus. So you know what? Why don't we make up our mind? If you haven't committed your ways to Jesus, you could come up to this altar today and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. You know what? He can fill you with the Holy Ghost, and he can straighten all that out, and he can make your life just like that. Close your mouth. Flies might fly in. Cool. Clap your hands at Jesus. Awesome. How many wants to go to heaven? Oh, I do too. You know what? I would love to go to heaven, but you know what? The thing is, you've got to have what the Bible says that we have to have in order to make it to heaven. You know what? The Bible says that we've got to repent. Is repentance enough? No, because if you just repent, you're still not going to, going to get to heaven. But what if you repent and you get baptized in Jesus' name? Oh, surely that'll help you to get to heaven, won't it? No. Well, you know what? What if you repent and, and if you uh, get baptized in Jesus' name and you get filled with the Holy Ghost? You know what? You can go up there to heaven. And you know what? The thing is, it's pretty cool. When you're in heaven. But anyway, you can go to heaven and you don't want to be left down here on earth. No. But you know how you are able to do that? Because one day, Jesus died on a cross. That's right. He was sacrificed for our sins. And the cool thing about it was we've got a free ticket in our hand if we'll do those three things. Somebody snap your finger. Cool. Awesome, dude. Clap your hands at Jesus one more time. Awesome. Oh, that's just so awesome. Cool. Now, you might ask, well, you know what? I want to go to heaven. When's it going to happen? I don't know. Because the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. So you know what? We've just got to keep serving him. But you know what? When that day comes, it's going to happen just like that. Somebody blink your eyes. Now blink it at your girlfriend. No, okay, no. But when you blink your eyes, that's almost the same amount of time that the Bible says. The Bible uses the word twinkling of an eye. Blink your eyes one more time. All right, you know what? So I got two red silks and I got a white silk here. And you know what? If you don't keep your eyes on this, you know what? Something just may change before your very eyes, and it can happen just like that. How many is ready to go to heaven? It could be in a twinkling of an eye. Clap your hands at Jesus one more time. Cool. Oh, let's bring this out here. This is my rapture box, all right? We're talking about going home. We're talking about the rapture. And you know what? I've got this... Uh, Oh, here we go. Look at this. This is pretty cool. Awesome. There's some colored blocks in there, and they've got some words on them there. And uh, I've got this thing here, see? And that's going to keep all those blocks from falling out just like that. Now, this black box here represents the world. Somebody say world. And this world is not going to let us go up to heaven. See, we're talking about again until Jesus calls us home. But in order to go to heaven, we've got to have those things that the Bible says that we've got to have be able to go up to heaven. But we can't have sin in our life. But this one says baptism, and this one says Holy Ghost. Now, you know what? Let's just take this out just like this, all right? All right. Now, I would imagine probably all of these blocks are going to be able to fall out just like that. All right? Let's talk about them, okay? Let me turn this around here. All right? Let's talk about, let's talk about this red one here. It says sin. 
But it also says murder. Do you want to do that? No. Do people that murder, will they get to go to heaven if they don't repent? No. And on this side, it says alcohol. Huh. How many has ever tasted beer? I hope you haven't. But you know what? If you become influenced in that kind of stuff, uh-uh. You know what? You can't have that stuff in you. you got to have the Holy Ghost in it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put that back in this box. Let's look at this gray one here. This gray one also says smoking. Should we smoke? No. This one says cheat. Should we cheat? No, because we've got to have the Holy Ghost with us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put that one in there just like that. And, oh, let's take a look at this green one here. It says lying. How many has ever told just a little, kind of bitty, little white lie? Thank you for being honest. Are you lying? Okay, he's lying. Good, he's never lied. That don't make sense. Okay, so anyway, lying and drugs. Oh, you know what? Kids even your age are doing drugs nowadays. But should we do that stuff? No, because we won't get to go to heaven. That's right. So let's put that in this box here. And then we've got one more. It looks like an orange one here. And it says, without holiness, aren't you girls glad that you dress like a girl? Are you boys glad? Are you glad that you dress like a true boy? Awesome, he's giving me two thumbs up. All right, so you've got to have holiness and you cannot steal. Oh, no, that means when you go to Walmart with your mom and she's getting ready to check out and you see that display of candy bars and gum and all that good stuff, and when she's not looking, you pick it up and put it in your pocket. That is a cool feeling, isn't it? No, it's not, because that's called stealing, and we can't steal. So you can't have this a part of your life either. So we're going to put that back in to the world there. But let's talk about these because these are very important. It says baptism. How many of you boys and girls have ever been baptized in the name of Jesus? Raise your hand if you have. All right, hands down. If you have it and you want to, raise your hand. Awesome, look at that. We better get the swimming pool ready. Cool. All right, so you've got to have this. We're going to put that in here just like that. And then what's this? This is the Holy Ghost. How many of you boys and girls have been filled with the Holy Ghost, huh? Where you've spoken in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave evidence. That's right. And you know what? That Holy Ghost is Jesus dwelling inside you, and it gives you power, not like Superman, but power beyond anything in this world. And we have got to have that in our lives. Now, here's the thing. We're going to put all of those in there, all right? And we're going to close the lid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick this back through here just like this. And what I want to show you is that you can't get in there. There we go. You know what? We can't go to heaven yet because Jesus hasn't called us home. But those who have been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and have repented, do you know what? This world's going to let go and let... How did that happen? You know what? I can't explain it. And the thing is, I can't explain what kind of day that's going to be when Jesus blows the trumpet and all those that are dead in the grave, they're going to rise first and then we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up into the clouds with them to be forever with the Lord. Does anybody want to be forever with the Lord someday? Cool. Clap your hands at Jesus one more time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, Brother Wagner needs, let's see here. Brother Wagner needs about eight people to help me. Who would like to help me? Okay, keep your hands raised. Hold on. I got to get my binoculars. <laughs> let's see who I can get here. Oh, how about you? Go on up there on the platform. All right, let's see here. One up there, yes, cool. Let me see. Oh, 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 oh. Would you like to help? Go on up there. All right, let me. Oh, I just found one right here. Would you like to go? That's four. Oh, let, oh nobody's raising their hands over here. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Hey, how about you, buddy? Go on up there. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, are you raising your hands or picking your nose? Huh? All right, raise your hand. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. How about another girl? How about another girl? Oh, how about, how about you, buddy, going up there? Right. How about you? All right. Man, you've grown up since i seen you the last time. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Clap your hands for him, everybody. Awesome. Stand back here, about right in here. Cool, cool. Stand in a straight line. Awesome. Now, here's the thing. 
I know a few names, but I don't know everybody's names here, so I'm going to have to ask them their name. You may not know them either, so I'm going to have to let you know their name the way that I hear it in my ears, the same way it's going to come out my mouth. You guys ready to tell me your names? What is your name? Miles. His name is Miles. What's your name? Carson. Carson. What's your name? Tiara. Tiara. What's your name? Jasmine. Jasmine. What's your name? Aiden. Aiden. What's your name? Jonathan. Jonathan. What's your name? Lucas. What's your name? Bella. Bella. What was it? Bella. Bella. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, I ask you your name, and uh, how old are you? Seven. Seven. Hey, uh, you got any girlfriends? <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'll use you other. Okay. And how old are you? Seven. And you got any girlfriends? No. All right. He said nine. Did you hear it? No. See? He said it again. He said nine. No, I said no. It's nine. I heard it with my ears. No, I'm just kidding you, buddy. I heard you say ten. All right. Sit back over here. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. Let's kind of scoot over this way just a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And stop. Come this way just a little bit. Stop. All right. You move back just a little bit. Now. Good, straight line. I hate to stand in front of you, but here's what we're going to do. I want to ask you a question. How many of you like to listen to music? I figured every hand would raise up. How many of you like to listen to music? I do. I listened to it all morning today. Yeah. Uh, so here's the thing. You put your hand down. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you can play an instrument? Any of you? Can you play an instrument? What about you? Trumpet? Cool. What about you? The radio? You can play the radio? Cool. All right. And what about you? The piano? What about you? The drums? Kind of. Show me what that instrument is. Okay. Okay. And uh, anybody else? Oh, what about you? Oh, that was the first thing I started on. Cool, dude. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I have some instruments back behind my backdrop, and I'm going to bring them out, and I'm going to let you guys play them. Okay? Does that sound cool? All right. Hold on here. All right. I'm going to bring these instruments out here. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Anybody know what kind of instruments these are? They are bells, that's right. And so I am going to give each of you a bell, and we're going to play it, okay? Now, they make this kind of sound, and this is the key of C. All right? And I want, when I give it to you, I want you to hold it like this on the white stick, okay? There you go. I'm going to give you that one. I am going to give you this one. All right, I'll give you the yellow one. I'm going to give you the green one. I'm going to give you the light blue. Okay, I'm going to give you the dark blue. I'm going to give you the purple. All right, and I'm going to give you the white one. There we go. All right, get out of the way here. Now, I forgot something. Oh, here it is. Now, in order for there to be a song, there has to be a director. All right, and I am the director. Okay, I have my baton here. I bought it at Walmart. It's just a toilet cleaner. I've only used it twice, okay? So here's the thing. Three times. Okay. <clears throat> no. So here's what I'm going to do. I want you to ring your bell when I tap you on the head. Stay in a straight line. I'm going to tap you on the head. Let's practice. Very good. Very good. Good. Awesome. Cool. Neat. Awesome. Do not ring your bell until I hit you on the head, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. We are going to play a song. And the song that I have selected is a song that all of these children know, and in fact, all of you know also. They sing it in their Sunday school class. It's, Jesus loves me, this I know. How many of you know that song? Sure you do, okay? So we're going to play that. When I tap you on the head, ring your bell once, okay? So here we go, all right? Move up just a little bit so I can squeeze through there. All right, awesome. Here we go. Here we go. Ready?
You're supposed to go like this, lean over. There you go, awesome. Okay, I'm glad we were so synchronized on that. Okay. Now, there's a second part to that song, and it says this. Can you stand back in line? Yes, Jesus. your bells on the table there. Awesome. Amen. You can go sit down. Awesome. We'll sell our CDs after church, okay? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Amen. 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 All right. Well, you know what? I love to listen to music, but you know what? I love to listen to the word of the Lord. And I love to listen to the truth of the word of the Lord. So you know what? We're going to do something else. I need three more people that would like to help me here. That hasn't helped me yet. Okay? There was a little girl over here. Would you like to help me? Go right up there on that platform. Awesome. And how about you, buddy? Go on up there. And how about this guy right here? Follow me up here. Cool. Clap your hands for him, everybody. Awesome. Cool, cool. Hey, man. All right. Now, you guys are young. Cool. So, okay. Okay. All right. Hey, I'm the preacher. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm the preacher. Yeah. Okay. So, let me ask you a question. What is your name? Sissy. Sissy. What is your name? Gentry. Gentry. What is your name? Barbara. <laughs> what? What's your name again? <laughs> Cindy, okay. Say, what is it? <laughs> Madison. Madison, is it? What is it? Maddox. Maddox, okay. You don't have to get upset about it. No, okay. All right, scoot over here. Awesome. Scoot over here, and you get over here next to your husband. Okay, cool. Now, where's your ring at? All right, whatever. Okay, now here's what we're going to talk about. Okay, I'm going to get down here on their level. Here's what we're going to talk about. Do you, how many knows what the Bible is? Hello? <laughs> you know what the Bible is? All right. The Bible is the Word of God that we look into and read and we find out. She wants to tell me something. What? I, I, I was thinking of the gratitude. Okay. All right. Hallelujah! <laughs> okay. Whatever. Okay, you just made me lose my train of thought. Okay. Wow, what a day. Let me bring this out here. Woo! Okay, let's try this again. Now, we're talking about the Bible. In the Bible, it tells us three things. Can you hold up three fingers? There you go. Three fingers. Okay. And the Bible tells us that we've got to repent. Can you say repent? Very good. And can you say be baptized? Be baptized. Oh, that is so wonderful. And can you, and can you say Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. Very good. Oh, you get excited when you say that, don't you? Bubby's tooth just fell out. Bubby's tooth just fell out. <laughs> I'm having fun. You're having fun, too. Okay, go ahead. I'll sit down there. Okay. Okay, no. But here's what we're going to do. Look what I have got here. I have got three. Let, let me speak here, okay? All right, I've got three different colored silks, and they each represent something. 
But you know what? Before I get in there, I have something that I want to pull out here. Look at these. Cool. You know what these are? These are feathered wreaths, and I have three of them. And the reason I brought you kids up here, because, you, well, yes, but I was watching you guys out there, and you were being very good, like angels. So you know what? I'm going to make you look like an angel, and I'm going to put this on your head, and that's your halo, okay? Isn't that cool? Yeah, and there you go. Awesome. Yeah, cool. And then, I don't know about you, dude. We'll just wear yours around the neck, okay? Okay. Maddox, right? All right, Maddox. All right, so here's the thing, all right? The Bible says that we've got to do these three things. It's a plan. Can everybody say plan? It's the plan of salvation for us to be able to go to heaven like I talked about when I first came out. All right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about these colored silks. And the first one we're going to talk about is this color. What a color is it? Very good. And you know what? When I look at this, it reminds me of something. It reminds me of the blood of Jesus. Do you realize that Jesus had nails pierced in his hands and his feet, he, in his side and in the, in the thorns on his head and his, in the crown? And all those punctures on his body produced blood to flow. And with all of that, the blood has power to forgive us of our sins. So somebody say, repent. repent. When you repent, you're saying, Jesus, I'm so sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Okay. So here, can you hold this? Very good. Now the next color that I have color is that dude it is blue it's your favorite cool and when I look at this it reminds me of something else baptize that's right but it reminds me of water because water is blue isn't it cool so when the second step of the plan of salvation is to be baptized can you hold that very good <laughs> all right and let me go over here to Maddox Maddox all right cool Oh, you've upgraded. You're looking cool now. Okay. What color is this? Can you not see? Huh? What color is it? What? It's not green. All right. It's yellow. Can you say yellow? All right. It is yellow. And you know what? When I look at that, it reminds me of something else. Hey, I'm the preacher. Okay. All right. And when I... Okay. All right. And when I look at this, it reminds me of something that comes up first thing in the morning. Very good, the sun. But you know what? We're not going to talk about the S-U-N. We're going to talk about the S-O-N. And his name is Jesus. And when Jesus lives inside of us, how do we know when that happens? When we have the Holy Ghost. Cool. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So that's the third step. Can you hold that? Very good. Okay. All right. Now, let's get into this bag here, okay? And I want to show you that this bag here is completely in. See? Can you see? All right, it's completely empty, isn't it? All right, see, it's empty. All right, all right, it's empty. Now, here's what we're going to do. I want to have your wreath. Oh, here, you take it and put it right inside that empty bag, just like that. Cool. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that silk and poke it through there, through that hole. Can you do that? Take the end of it like this and poke it through the hole there, okay? Very good. Just poke it through the hole. Now grab a hold of the other side. Grab a hold of the other side. No, let her do it. There you go. Grab a hold of the other side and hold on to it. Now, here's the thing. Okay. She goes, sorry. <laughs> Let's try it again. Okay. So we'll poke it through there just like that and pull out on that side. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and pull it and make sure it's even on both sides. Keep going. Awesome. Stop. Now, here's what I want you to do. Can you snap your fingers? She, can you play like you can, just like, okay? Yeah, like that, okay. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and when I get to three, you snap your quiet snapper, okay? Here we go. One, two, three, snap. snap. Oh, cool. Hey. Snap, snap. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Step back, let everybody see. Step back here. Do you know what you just did? Yeah. What? She don't know. But look what you just did. Awesome. Give her a hand, somebody. That's cool. That is really cool. All right. Here, take your wreath off. Okay, this is repentance. And now we're doing baptism. Okay, let me put... Hold on, hold on. 
Let me put it in there. Awesome, we'll put it in there. Now, stick your, stick your blue, no, you hold that one. Okay, this is like the nursery class. Okay, <laughs> hold that. All right, now stick your, your blue, stick your blue one through there. Yep, stick the point of it through there and pull it through. Make sure it's even on both sides. All right, you got it? Cool. Now, here's the thing. All right. He can't catch his breath. He's laughing. All right, stick it through there again, dude. All right, grab a hold of it. Make sure it's even on both sides. All right, let go. All right, why did I pick him? Okay, but anyway, all right. Can you snap your fingers? That was another quiet snapper. Okay, let's try it again. When I go one, two, three, on three, snap your fingers. Here we go. One, two, three. He says it's going to be blue. Ah, you're exactly right. Cool. Oh, hold that there. Awesome. Clap your hands for him, somebody. Let me have yours. Somebody say repent. Somebody say be baptized. And now that one stands for the Holy Ghost. All right. Can, hello, Tonto or Ronja. Or, here we go. Stick that through there. All right. Make sure it's even on both sides. Now, can you snap your fingers? Let's practice. Oh, that's quiet. Cool. All right. I'm going to go one, two, three, and snap your fingers. Here we go. One, two, three. Cool. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Look at that. Can you pull that out? That is just like totally awesome, dude. Somebody clap your head for him. Go back over there. Go back over there and stand. Cool. That is cool. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Okay? Now, we're talking about repentance. We're talking about baptism. And we're talking about receiving the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. I am going to let everybody know this very important information. You cannot just do one of these and decide you don't want to do the other two. For instance, you say, well, I'm going to repent because that's easy. Jesus, I'm sorry. And then you say, well, you know what? I don't want to be baptized because I'm scared of water. And I don't want the Holy Ghost because it scares me. No. Somebody say, you got to do all three. All right. Now listen to this important information. You can't do two of these and decide not to do the other one. For instance, you repent, oh Jesus, I'm sorry, and then God fills you with the Holy Ghost like what's going to happen today, and then you decide, but I don't want to be baptized because I'm scared of water, okay? Somebody say, you got to do all three. You do all three. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your, your feathered wreaths. Let me have that one, all right? Let me have the feathered wreath, okay? And here, 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 buddy. All right, now you keep the silk. You keep the silk. Okay, I'll get through this. I know I will. Okay, and I'll take the silk. Okay, help me, Jesus. All right, let me have it, buddy. Okay, who's his parents? All right, all right, let me have it. <sighs> okay, now. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put all three of them inside that empty bag here at the same time. Cool. Now, can I have your silks? Got that one. Awesome. Let me have that one. Okay. Okay. I'm surprised he didn't blow his nose on it. Okay. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. Somebody say you got to do all three. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to put all three of these through the hole just like this. Okay? Huh? All right. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure they're even on both sides. Now, all three of you at the same time, along with everybody out there, at the same time, I'm going to go one, two, three. On three, you snap your fingers three times like this. Okay? Here we go. One, two, three. It sounds like the Adams family. <laughs> I saw it on the radio, okay? All right. Well, didn't work out like I thought it would. Well, anyway, there, there is a true message behind this, okay? Because what I want to say is that you have got to repent, okay? And you've got to be baptized, and you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, all right? Isn't that make sense? Huh? Does that make sense? Cool. And look what we have here. We have a complete 
circle. So when you do, when you do all three, you're complete in Jesus. All right, go down. Hurry, go down. All right, give them a hand, somebody. They did a good job. You can go down. Is that yours? Is that yours? Is that yours? That's his? Okay, take it to him. Go, go way back there. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Are they still out there? Yeah, over here. Over here. Okay. Okay. All right. The check better be good today. That's all I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> oh. Honest to Jesus, I don't talk like that everywhere I go, but my goodness, it was sure fun up here, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. How many's having fun? Somebody raise your hand real high. Cool, cool. Amen. How many knows what this is? It's, it's my map. It's, it's my map. It's my map. Hold on. Okay, listen. Listen, shh, shh. We are both right. It is the Bible. It's the Holy Word of God. But you know what? I look at it as a map. Now, you know what? I had to travel two and a half hours yesterday to get to Peoria from where I live. And do you know who helped get me here? It was called a GPS in my car. You know what that stands for? Global Positioning System, which means there's a lady on there, and she tells me to turn right, turn left, keep going straight. She gives me directions. Does this Bible here give directions? It sure does. You know what? I can open it up, and it tells me right here that I should not go there because mm -mm, that's, that's a bad area to go in. And you know over here, it gives me directions. Say, you know what? You should go this way because that's, that's going to be something good that you're going to encounter. Yeah. And you know what? We can find truth in the word of the Lord and direction. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my hat off in honor of the word of the Lord. Plus I'm hot. Okay. And I have two scriptures today that I would like to read for you. The first one is in the book of John chapter 3 and verse 8. And I apologize uh, for time wise for not being able to do the raise him praise him song. Maybe next time that I come. Okay. All right. But we're going to still have fun here. John chapter 3 and verse 8. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. We're going to have fun with this. It says, the wind bloweth. Everybody say wind. wind. All right. Everybody take in a deep breath and go. <laughs> Boys, you need, you need some breath mints over here. Woo. No, you just blew. And that's what the wind does. So listen to scripture. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but you cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. That's in the King James Version. Here's Brother Wagoner's version. You know what? The wind is blowing wherever it wants to go. And you can hear the sound of that wind. But you know what? You look and look and you just can't tell from what direction it's coming from or what direction it's going to. Wow. Everybody say wind. wind. Now, let's look back to another scripture here in the book of Acts, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Everybody clap your hands real quick. Awesome. That's suddenly. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty, everybody say wind. wind. Oh, we must be going to be talking about wind today. You're right. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all, everybody say all. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. We are going to talk about what I had you repeat a couple of times. Everybody say, when. when. I'm going to ask you a trick question. I'm giving you a warning. How many of you boys and girls have ever seen the wind? Raise your hand. 
okay, you, you got a lot of smart kids here. Cool. You are right. Nobody has ever seen the wind. It's invisible. But you can see the effects of wind. Everybody go, cool, dude. Now, I want to entitle this message today, Seeing is Believing. Uh huh. So you cannot see wind. Uh huh. You can't tell what direction it's coming from. And you can't see where that wind is going. But you know what? You can see the effects of wind. Let me talk to you here, boys and girls. How many of you boys and girls have ever stood outside? You can go outside the doors of this church and you can look off in a very short distance and you can see a tree. And how many of you have ever seen the leaves rattle just a little bit? What's causing that? The wind. How many of you have ever stood and looked up at a flagpole? And there is that flag that is all the way at the top, but it's not just dead, but it's doing this. Very good. Oh, no, it's him again. (laughs) You're my buddy. All right, all right. I'll allow you to say amen when I preach. Okay. The wind... Very good. The wind is causing that flag to move. How many of you have ever, with your clothes that you have on for that particular day, and it's windy outside, and you walk outside, and that wind goes, what's causing that? The wind. That's right. But in all of those cases, in all of those instances, nobody has ever seen the wind. Because it's invisible. Let me bring God into the picture now. How many of you have ever seen God? Nobody. Nobody's ever seen God because the Bible tells us that God is a spirit with a capital S. And with that being, nobody has seen the face of God. But listen, can we see the effects of God? Oh, yes, we have. What kind of effects do we see when God is blowing through a place like this this morning? We'll see His effects such as somebody being filled with the Holy Ghost. How many would like to see that effect happen today? Oh, hallelujah. How many have seen the effect of God where He's healed somebody of a disease or a hurt? Or something, a sickness. How many has ever been a product of that? Sure. How many has ever seen the effect of God where he's moved into a service such as like this? And we feel. Somebody say feel. Feel. Touch my hand. I feel that. I felt that. Did you feel me? But you know what? You said wind is invisible, Brother Wagner. I did. But do you realize we can feel the wind? And, talking about God, we can feel God like we're feeling Him right now. I want you to listen to this, okay? Because it's a sound of a certain type of wind. How many of you ever heard wind like this? Huh? Maybe it's during the winter and they're calling forth a blizzard of snow. That could happen before we know it. But it's like, ooh, that gives me goose pimples. Ooh, goosebumps. Ooh. And guess what kind of results we would be seeing with that wind blowing at us or we're looking outside. It could blow our hat off of our head or it could, you know, blow our hair a little bit and mess it up and all. But wait. You might think that's a strong wind, but what what about this sound maybe, huh? Have you ever heard wind like this? Whoa. You know, just last week I was in Texas with the brother and sister Blake, and uh, they live near Galveston, Texas, which is down by the coastline. And they just experienced some wind just like this from what was called a hurricane. How many of you have ever been in a hurricane? I never have. I, I, I've even never been near a tornado, all right? 
but you're talking about some forceful winds that are blowing. I saw some damage down there last week when I was there. Oh, homes that were torn to pieces and, and, and siding that was blown off of houses, but that's a fierce wind. But now, how many has ever heard of a wind like this? Wait, Brother Wagner, I don't hear a wind. What's that the sound of? Wind chimes. So let's imagine you're out on, at the back of your house, and maybe on your patio, and it's just a soft, gentle breeze blowing across the patio. And you got some chimes hanging there, and it's making that noise. So you see, there, there's all different types of wind that will produce different things. All right? Somebody say cool. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something real, real fun. Brother Clausing, where are you at? Oh, there you are. Can you go ahead and get this prepared up here? He's going to do something. So don't watch him. Just keep your eyes on me because I'm going to bring this thing out. How many of you know what this is? Not you again. This is not a Christmas tree, even though I could see why you would think that, okay? I feel sorry for that angel that sits on top. But anyway, okay? This is called my air zooka. Okay? And here's what it has. It has some plastic on this end, and it has a little thing that you can pull like that. And it goes back like that. The reason why, because on the inside, it's got some bungee cords like that. So when I pull out on it, boom, it goes like that. All right? Now, here's the thing. I've got this white styrofoam cup here. I'm going to sit it there. And if I was to pull out on this and let go, cool, dude. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you saw the wind when I pulled out on this? No, you didn't. Now, watch. I'm going to let you feel something. I'm going to let you feel the wind. His eyes blink. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear me? Cool. All right. So here's what I need. I need a volunteer. How about you, buddy? Would you like to help me? Just come up here. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. What is your name? Dakota. Dakota. Stand right here. Just like that. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to put this cup on top of your head, just like that. Okay? And you stand right there. And I'm going to back up over here. And I'm going to see if I can blow that off your head. You think I can? But while, before I get ready to do that, I want you to watch what comes out of here and before that cup. And tell me if you can see the wind. Here we go. His eyes are... Here we go. Ready? Oh, I did. I know why. I've got to get my scope out. Here we go. All right. And... Cool. Awesome. Now, pick the cup up. Take two steps back. I'm going to take two steps back. Now, before I shoot again, did anybody see the wind? No. Are you seeing the effect? Yes. You guys are understanding. Here we go. Let's try it again. Whoa! Pick it up. Take two steps back. I'll take two steps back. This is getting good. Let me ask you a question. How many saw the wind? Did you see the effect? Yes. I think you guys are understanding. Here we go. Let's see if I'm a good aim. Here we go. Oh, it hit you? 
So I need to go this way. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. I guess you got to be a good shot like pastor when you're shooting a deer. One more time. It moved, didn't it? Well, I just can't seem to get it off. So there you go. All right. Give me my hand, somebody. He did a good job. Is it ready? You thought that was cool, but wait a minute. How many saw the wind? Did you see it? Did you see the effect? Well, you know what? I'm going to show you a different effect. I am going to use my fog machine, and I'm going to fill the cavity of this thing up right here, and you are going to see some smoke rings like you have never seen before in your life, okay? Let's fill this baby up here. That's good. Turn it off. Cool. Here we go. Oh, come on. One more time. Yeah. All right. That's good, brother. Here we go. You ready to have some good time? Boom. 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 Let's see if I can get it back there to pastor. Oh, it's kind of boom. All right. There we go. All right. Clap your hands at Jesus. You turn off. All right. Sit down. Sit down. All right. Now, here's what I'm trying to do. I am trying to teach you that you cannot see wind, but you can see the effects of wind. We saw the effect where the styrofoam cup fell off his head because of the wind. You saw the smoke rings, which was helping you to see somewhat of the wind. You saw the effect of that. But you know what? We're talking about God here today. All right? Somebody say, I feel him. You know what? I feel Jesus in this place too. And you know what? God is here right now. You as a kid, your imagination can grow beyond these walls. And I want you to realize today that God is here. You cannot see Him. But I believe that before this service is over, you're going to see the effects of God before you walk out that door. What do you mean, Brother Wagner? I'm going to give an altar call here in just a little bit. And you know what? If you have enough faith that you want to receive the Holy Ghost and a refilling of the Holy Ghost, that effect of God will land upon you and you'll begin to speak in a most beautiful language that signifies that Jesus is living inside of you. There might be some adult here today or even a kid that needs healing in your body. You've had a hard time grasping. You've been letting this disease or this sickness defeat you in your spirit. And you're thinking, I know there is a God, but I don't know if I have just enough uh, faith within me to believe that God can heal my body. Let me tell you, friend, He's here today, and He wants to perform that effect upon you. You feel it? I saw it on you. I saw your, your shirt. And you know what? I'm going to look at some of you kids here when you come up to pray. And I can tell by when I look at you. <laughs> when I look at you, you're going to have your eyes closed. You're going to be praying. And you know what? I can tell by your praise that you're feeling Jesus because tears coming down your cheek. I can see a smile on your face because of that blessed glory, Holy Ghost falling upon you. Before we do that, I want to do one extra step here. I have some great, great friends of mine. They are children's evangelists as well. You may have had them here or you may know of them. Their names are Brother, brother Denny and Sister Plock. who used to be from St. Louis. They're stationed now in Memphis, Tennessee. They've been doing children's ministry for 25, 30 years now. We had them at our Illinois district camp about six, seven years ago. And 
we were there in the boardroom after a night service and he had his laptop in there and he began to talk to me and a few others about their recent trip that they took to a country in Africa called Zimbabwe. And he began to show pictures how in that crusade that they were doing, there were many adults, and he began to show these pictures. And if you'll put that first picture up there, if you would please, you're going to see that there were over thousands of these Zimbabweans who were worshiping the Lord. You can see how they were all worshiping the Lord. Hands were raised. I don't know if you turn the lighting down up here, if you can see it any better or not. A very large room filled with Holy Ghost believers and just worshiping the Lord. How many likes that kind of atmosphere? And you know what? As well as I feel it here, Pastor, in that very same picture there, there was a wind that was blowing. A wind. It wasn't literally blowing their clothes, but it was blowing through their spirit. People filled with the Holy Ghost, people being healed, people's lives being changed. But Sister Plock, as she was telling me this story, she says, the strangest thing happened. She says, and you will see by this next picture, not yet, but you will see by this next picture how it looks a little bit confusing. If you'll put that on there now. To you, as, as it did to me, it makes no sense. But she began to draw an outline. If you look here, you'll begin to see the silhouettes of some images. Not only that, if you look at the squiggliness of that picture there, does that not look like how fire reacts? Huh? And did I not read to you a scripture today where it says the fire sat upon their heads? <laughs> I believe that the Holy Ghost was there that day. And Sister Plock, she told me, she says, and this was back in the day before digital cameras and all of that. And she just took with 35 millimeter camera film. And she said that this came back. And she says, I know that it was produced in the way that it was supposed to. And so she believes, and I believe with her, and I hope you believe with me, but you have your right to your own opinion. But I believe those are flames that are shooting up from that spirit that was taking place. Then, another picture that I'm getting ready to show you. It is just so cool. Put that on there. These people are not raising their hands. But there's an invitation of some people that are coming in there. And I want you to look at this. If I can get my button to work right. If you'll look at this one, that one right there. There's some right in here. Look there at the back door. Look what's coming in back here. A brightness. A figure of a body. They said, and I kind of agree with them. Thought it kind of looked like angels. Kids, you've got an imagination. Do you believe there's angels here today? But adults, sometimes as we grow, sometimes we question many things. We question things about God. But how many of us believe that there is a power of investment here by angels that want to do something in this service today? Some of you may know, and you can take that picture down. Something personally happened to me where I felt the wind of God come in. Three year, two years ago, back in June, I was having some chest pains and right here, right in the middle. And I'm not ashamed to say my age. I just had my 57th birthday, so back then I was 54. And began to tell my wife and began to experience some chest pains. And it's like, I don't know what's going on, but I did know this. I know that I had a history in my family of genetics with heart conditions, heart attacks, and, uh, generic uh, heart attack with this and that. So I had that knowledge. So I checked myself. I was just getting ready to go to the district conference that summer, campground. Just simply putting on my clothes was causing a deep pain. I sat down. It would not go away. 
A couple months prior to that, I would sit down, it would go away, and I'd feel okay. So anyway, long story short, I checked myself into the hospital, and they did a blood draw, and they found out that the enzymes in my blood were very high, which is an indication that you have some kind of heart issue. Musicians, would you come while I'm finishing my story? There I was in our old local hospital. They took me then by ambulance over to Terre Haute, Indiana. They checked me into the hospital there, and the doc- heart doctor came in. He says, we're going to do a heart cath on you tomorrow. Went in. They laid me down on the table, pulled up the screen. He goes, oh, my. He says, you've got some major heart blockage. He says, you've got a 99% blockage in one of your art- arteries. You have a 70%. You also have a 50%. He asked me the question as I'm laying there on the table. He says, do you want open heart surgery? And I'm thinking, no, I don't. I really don't. He said, he waved his hand like this. He said, listen. He said, here's what I'm going to do. In that artery where you have 99% blockage, he says, I'm going to put a stent in there. Now, kids, I don't know if you know what a stent is. It's just a little device. It's going to open up your artery to allow the blood flow to go through there. Because you see, my blood flow, blood wasn't flowing to my heart. He put that in. He said, you know what? I'm not going to do anything to your 70% blockage. He said, but I want you to come back in two months. He said, then we'll put another stint in there. Went home, got prayed for, trusting in God that he would give me good health. I went back in two months, went to the same doctor. They put me down on the table, did the heart cath. He got inside and he says, rubbed his chin. I remember that. He said, huh. He said, let me tell you something. Looks a little different here. He says, your 70% that I was going to put a stent in, he says, not even 70% anymore. He says, and neither is your 50. You know what I felt? I felt the wind of God blow across that room right then. I felt the Holy Ghost. Because I knew that God had done something previously before I even got to the doctor. And today, I'm still alive to give a great testimony. I'm thankful for the wind that blows through our lives. My question to everybody here today, kids, listen. Jesus wants to blow through your life today. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And if you want the Holy Ghost or to be refilled again, I want you to come. And First of all, I want you to stand. I need everybody to stand. I want our teachers who are a great group of people. I want you to come and stand up here at this altar and then children, I'm going to have you stand in front of them. Would you come? As they're coming, I want everybody to be mindful of what's going and taking place right now. There's a God that is in this place. Not only does He want to do something for our kids who need strength in Jesus, but He wants to do something for everyone that is represented. Teachers, would you turn around and face the audience because the children are going to come to you. Children, would you come now and stand in front of your teachers. Awesome. Would you face your teachers? Would you face your teachers? Let's not all bunch up, but let's try to, let's try to spread out just a little bit. Awesome. The rest of you, here's what I'm going to ask. You only let your faith do what you expect out of it. If you need healing in your body, if you need salvation, I want you to come because there's extra altar workers up here. Would you come at this time? All right. The rest of you adults, could you come now and stand behind our children? Awesome. Some of these children already have their eyes closed, getting ready to pray. Let's just get ready. Children, here we go. Here we go, kids. I want you to close your eyes. Keep your eyes closed. Ha ha. I see the wind blowing. I see the results that are happening here. Close your eyes. Now I want you to lift both of your hands. Come on. Come on, lift both your hands. You're reaching out. You're reaching out. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, adults, let's gather around these children. Lift your head up. Come on, come on. You're looking up because you're going to find strength in Him today. Keep your eyes closed. (laughs) And then that last step, I want you to open up your mouth and I want you to begin, Jesus. Come on, I see some effects happening over here. Come on. 
That's the effects that I'm talking about that the Holy Ghost is going to do. Come on. I believe it's going to reach on out to our adults right now. Come on, let it flow over. Let it flow. 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 Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. Come on. Come on. Keep on giving me praise. Don't stop. Don't stop. Jesus is here right now. Come on. If you're around somebody that you see the effect of the wind of God blowing on their soul, pray with them. Hallelujah. Minister to them right now. He God, have your way today, God. You're in this house. Let your angels minister right now, God. Come on to the youngest, to the oldest. Nobody can stop the deflect of the wind of God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Come Oh my God, my God, my God. That's it. Come on, kids, lift him up. 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 That's it. I see the effect. I see the effects of God. Jesus, I'm home.
together. Our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long
what a beautiful, beautiful spirit of the Lord that we feel here at this altar today. This is important. When you have children that start reaching the age for the clousing of ours, you watch them turn 18, Sister Angie, 19, 20, 21, 22. You pray that they had enough of these kind of services. Because let me tell you what, the world is doing its best to impress its mark upon them. As my children head off to college, Brother Dylan, your mom and dad send you away to college. They pray that somewhere down in Florida, you had enough services such as this. When you get away, you can still look back at those marks for the bread that God made on my life when I was younger. There is such a comfort. No wonder Jesus said, unless you come as a little child, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. There's such a comfort that comes with this age of faith. I used to be an electrician and I worked on the lights on the smokestacks. And uh, I, I never was one that was fond of heights. Just fell my lot to do it. And uh, I act a whole lot more brave than I was. I'll just put it that way. And I can remember coming down these, the first time I came down the smokestack, I had to come down by myself, went up with a, with a, a mentor, a journeyman electrician, and we was working up there, but I had to go down and do some work down below, and so I had to go back down by myself. You know, you can do a whole lot of things when somebody's with you, but when you're alone, And so how many of you know how long a football field is? 100 yards, 300 foot. You take two of those and add them together, and then you add 90 foot on the top of that. And that's how high I was up in the air. And I had to come down a ladder to get to the ground. Now, I was okay when that guy was behind me, encouraging me. Our children do okay when mom and dad's behind them and encouraging them. But I tell you what, it's not very long. And I know you guys think that 18 years is a long time coming. Brother Fidel, Levi will be in college before you can blink your eye. And it wasn't very long until Joe Willis looked at me and he said, okay, we've done all we can do up here. I need you to go down to the bottom and run this thing through its courses. I said, are you going with me? He said, no, I got to stay up here in case something else. I said, I'm doing that by myself. And on the inside, I was saying, oh, no, I'm not. So as I started down that, I got to that smokestack, got to that ladder. I shut my eyes and went all the way back to when I was a child and I felt secure. And I started singing, Jesus, Jesus, how sweet thy name. Jesus, Jesus, always the same. Once I put... Look, folks, once you put your hands on the ladder and your feet on the ladder, it's all the same. It's just step down, step down, step down. And it's going to be, it's supposed to be there anyway. Brother Matt, I shut my eyes. I held on tight, but I shut my eyes. And I sang the songs that my Sunday school teachers and my mother taught me all the way to the bottom. And I wasn't alone anymore. Because a service is just like this. 
It was scary, let me tell you. Let me tell you, your children are going to face scary times. But they need to be able to close their eyes and find a place of faith that they experienced. Thank you for making this happen today. Thank you, Brother Wagner. Thank you so much. Brother and Sister Clousing, thank you guys so much. Could we give them a hand clap for appreciation? It's an amazing couple. I'm telling you, this couple loves young people and children. They better. They have six of them. They love young people and children, and they're doing a wonderful job, they're working like crazy. And I know he, he's, he's got enough passion for all of us. But uh, thank you so much for the work that you guys put into this to make this happen. Brother and Sister Clousing, we love you and appreciate you. And we are indebted to you for helping us take care of our children and bring them to the throne. Thank you so much. Amen. One more time, can we give God a hand clap of appreciation? Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. Thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you for your wind of your spirit that has blown through this house today. Thank you for every one of these young people that you touched their lives today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Meet Brother Wagner. And I think he's got some things out in the, some magic stuff out there that you're going to sell. Is that what you're doing out there? Huh? He says he don't do magic, but I watched him turn, <laughs> not water into wine, um, two, two $1 bills into a $2 bill. He, he, he's a pretty incredible guy. I know it's not magic, but it's pretty cool stuff. Amen. God bless you. Meet him and uh, greet one another. God bless you. You're dismissed.